All right, good evening everyone. My name is Brian and I just want to tell you I'm not a native English speaker, but I will try my best to convey my speech clearly. My topic is going to be about coffee and cancer. And some background about coffee is coffee has been the most popular drink, I guess, for us, especially college students, since we needed it to um, either use it to get energy temporarily or even to stay up during panels week. But um, too much coffee, people say, can be bad for our health. And sometimes coffee has been related to an increased risk uh, for cancers. And some facts would be um, caffeine consumption could also lower the body pH, um, which is advantageable for cancers because cancer thrives in the acidic environment. So moving on to my main claim is, I would say, I'd say, Moderate coffee drinking is not associated or shows no association with an increased risk of cancers at the majority of the of the body sites. Now I just say moderate. Moderate means medium. If I say low would be one cup of coffee per day, moderate would be three, and high would be five. So since I so all these justifications points that I that I have would be related to the moderate word that I use. Uh, my first point would be there is little evidence for an association between throat cancer and the amount of coffee consumed. Um, now, since, I, since I'm a biotechnology student, uh, most of my sources here are from par primary journals or primary literatures. And it's, it, it would be really hard for me to cite all of them here. Um, but it, it is safe to say that all these justifications that I that I that I make uh, is from those primary articles. So first, there is little evidence for an, for an association between throat cancer risk and the and the amount of coffee consumed. So a literature survey pulled the data of 22 studies, uh, 14 originating from US, USA and Europe, which means it's representative. It's not from USA alone and Europe. And there's also um, and that's 14 out of 22 other comes from part of the world showing that report reported that that there is an unchanged or reduced risk of throat cancer with the consumption of three or more cups of coffee a day however there there are some biases here because we do not know specifically um, about how hot the coffee is because you know an increased temperature of uh, of hot drinks is related to throat cancers. And second, a recent large Norwegian prospective study of 389 middle-aged men and 624 women followed up for over 14 years found a relationship between coffee intake and cancer of the throat. Second point here, recent science fails to support an association between coffee consumption and an increased risk of pancreatic cancer. Some, but not all, of the most recent studies suggest an inverse association. Now, inverse means that when one goes up, one goes down. Since my topic is, is about coffee and cancer, <coughs> it suggests that if you drink more coffee, you have a lower risk of developing cancer. Now, a meta-analysis of 14 court studies. Meta-analysis means compiling a big amount of studies in one detailed analysis. Uh, covering Europe and the United States, Japan, including more than 600,000 individuals, followed up for over 14 years, also identified that there is an inverse association between coffee drinking and risk of developing of uh, pancreatic cancers. Um, overall, an additional cup of coffee per day was associated with 4% lower risk of pancreatic cancers. Um, Another meta-analysis study, which included 14 core studies looking at coffee consumption, also found a significant <coughs> inverse relationship. My third point here, research suggests that there is no link between coffee consumption and our kidney cancers. The World Cancer Research Fund identified 18 case control and 5 core studies clearly and consistently indicating that there is a lack of evidence proving that um, proving that there is a link between coffee consumption and kidney cancer. And then a few additional studies reviewed, uh, including more, more than 500,000 women, more than 240,000 men, uh, and 1,478 cases of kidney cancer, confirms that there is 
a lack of link uh, between coffee consumption and kidney cancer across all studies reviewed. Moving on to my fourth point here, there is no evidence that coffee consumption is linked to our skin cancers. Caffeine, however, may protect skin cells uh, against the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiations. Uh, in 2008, a study in mice reported that caffeine added to drinking water or placed directly onto the skin, um, which induces the apoptosis or a cell death of skin, of, of skin cells. Um, in 2009, the same work performed in human skin cell culture showed that caffeine doubled the mortality or the death of cells damaged by the ultraviolet, which leads me to concluding that um, caffeine decreases the risk of cancers and skin. Uh, moving on to my, five, uh, my fifth point, high consumption of coffee, however, um, which would suggest more than five cups a day, uh, may increase the risk of lung cancer. However, the effects of smoking or other factors may still exist because, uh, I mean, therefore, these results should be inter interpreted with caution because um, research suggests that high intake of coffee is usually uh, related to high intake of, of smoking. Uh, a recent meta-analysis, again, including some cases uh, or eight case control studies involving 5,347 lung cancer cases and more, more than 100,000 non-cases reported that there is a positive association between the highest coffee intake, at least five to seven cups a day, and lung cancer. Uh, for example, those who consumed the most coffee had 27% higher risk of de developing lung cancer. Um, while the increase in coffee consumption of two cups per day led to 14% increased risk of lung cancer. Uh, this coffee-related increased risk was significantly associated with high coffee intake, uh, but like as, like I said earlier, um, we should interpret this uh, result with caution, with caution because high intake of coffee usually uh, is, is suggested with high intake of, uh, of smoking. So uh, there goes my conclusion that moderate coffee drinking, which is medium and not high, is, shows no association with an increased risk of cancers in our majority of body sites. So, thank you. All right, Brian, uh, I think at the very beginning, you want to be careful about apologizing before you begin. Uh, I didn't have any problem understanding you whatsoever. I don't know what you're apologizing about. You sound great. So uh, I, I think you are much more fluent in English than many native English speakers, so I wouldn't be worried about that at all. I don't think you have anything to apologize for. Now, maybe a couple things to apologize for about your proposition. For instance, uh, not only do you have a negative term in it. You've got two negative terms in it, so that's a little complicated. There's no preview of what the supporting structure would be. At the beginning, I think people might have girded themselves a little bit more confidently if they knew that there were going to be five supporting arguments that you're going to develop. That's a lot to try and cover in the amount of time that you're going to have once you get through that introduction. I think you go a little bit overboard on that. The, the supporting structure is labeled as you get to each point, and that's fine. The problem that I have is I'm not exactly sure what's controversial. At the beginning, you kind of suggest that some people have suggested drinking too much coffee is bad for you, kind of make a general argument about that. But I don't know that anybody, I, I never heard anybody suggest before that drinking coffee leads to throat cancer or to kidney cancer or to pancreatic cancer. Certainly I never heard anybody suggest that it leads to skin cancer. So to me it's like saying on some of these arguments, well here's a study that says that drinking coffee doesn't lead to um, you know, <laughs> leprosy. 
I didn't know anybody had suggested that it led to leprosy. Why did we need to study on this? Why is there controversy here? I think you're do what you're doing is you're summarizing the research that's been done here without explaining why that research was done in the first place. Why is it that we need to have this meta-analysis that you keep citing on each of these studies that gives us these conclusions? There needs to be more context that somebody has suggested this, that preliminary research might have offered a reason to believe that there was a link between different kinds of cancers and coffee consumption, or that there might be a risk related to uh, excessive consumption or high consumption, but moderate consumption, there is no link to those particular things. That needed to be explained a little bit more. Otherwise, it just sounds like it's an informative speech. Let me tell you what the research says on this subject. What are you arguing against? I don't know what the claim is that uh, requires this kind of refutation. Your fifth point goes the opposite direction of everything else you're saying. It's completely unnecessary to the point that you're presenting. I don't think you need it. I, it probably should have come out re immediately. And like I said, I think you probably even could have condensed the other earlier points as well. Uh, the fourth point on skin cancer, that research sounds like it's all based on caffeine. And the, I don't know that you can equivocate caffeine and coffee. I mean, I know caffeine is the main ingredient in coffee that's likely to be the cause of these sorts of things. But the research doesn't even suggest that people were consuming coffee, it sounds like they're rubbing caffeine on people. And, you know, we took a caffeine uh, salve and rubbed it on people in order to do that. Well, you know what? If I was doing that, that might cause a cancer risk. I don't know. I don't know anybody who uses caffeine salves as a way to get their caffeine injection in the day. You know, so I'm not sure that that's really an argument that we have to worry about. So I thought that that was a little bit problematic. Um, I know that you have uh, research that you've done. It comes from a variety of sources. But uh, saying that it's meta-research doesn't, doesn't absolve you from having to tell us, well, where did you read the meta-research? Saying that this is a, co a compilation of studies, well, somebody compiled those studies. Who did the compilation and identify them? Right now, if I was having to refute this, the only way I have of identifying one set of studies is the number of participants in the study. Okay, can I find a study that had that 214,000 people in it? I guess that's the one he's talking about because other than that, there's no name associated with it, no university, no date, any of those kinds of things. And I think you need to be more consistent about that. And of course, it was a little long, as I think you probably know. All right, thank you.